go, go, go. Let's get it. I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick. I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most. I tell her no bitches, so extra. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me. Niggas, they wanna fight, they some bustlers. After Nagi had scored a monstrous goal, they were now on the map as contenders to even win here. Say looks around at the U20 team, saying it was pitiful how they let them score. He gets the ball again and starts to play. He dribbles forward with Ren being the one who guards him. Don't I get a hello after all this time? Say just looks at him doing stepovers paying no mind to his younger brother. He performs a left footed chop and bursts it in speed as... Ren would be right next to him. Taro yelled out for the pass, but Say ignored him and kept dribbling forward, with Ren trying to keep up. Don't think I'll let you get away so easily. Despite everything you do, you still can never surpass me while being my younger brother. Say dances around Ren and gets open right after this. Bulok's defense begins crashing in on him as it gets closer and closer to his shot distance. He dribbles forward to Sendo and then passes as he's the only one open, but Nico quickly sends out the ball. Second ball. Great job, you moron. Now, how about a counter? Karasu traps it and dribbles into the midfield, where he gets pressed, but he passes to Otoya. This is where Oliver Aiku steps out, but they make a pass to Jigiri, who bursts it forward with speed. He goes across, but Sei is the one to kick the ball right where it lands to Rin. It would be unfortunate for Japan's U20 team that it ricocheted this way. Aiku quickly tries to step through, but he's too slow. And Ren scores the first goal of this match, putting Blue Lock back up by one point. Say then makes this small declaration, but this belittles the players on his team and they continue to play at a higher level because of it. They go on the attack with Say at the heart of it all. He sends it to the outside where Cho dribbles and gets around, but is guarded by Ryo, who does his best. However, Cho and Sei are passing back and forth, and Ryo can't do anything to stop them. Sei then sends the ball to the last corner, as Cho would grab it and sends it to Sendo. There it is. This is my chance to finally show them. However, Rin is able to get back and kick the ball out through everything, as Japan's prodigy child had appeared. Sei watches the ball bounce towards him, and then kicks it towards the top right corner with no warning at all. However, Aryu is able to stop it in the final moments of this game, leaving Blue Lock up by one by the half. Each team goes into their locker rooms, with Sei thinking of leaving. As he steps towards the door, Aiku isn't the one that stops him this time. It's of course Isagi, still in his warm-up jacket. Give me the ball, and I'll score the goals to save Japan from these pests. Say looks at Isagi and then back to Sendo. Sit out the rest of this match. You've already missed three goals already. The reason we're even in this situation is because of me. But we need a striker who can carry us. Say then turns back to Isagi, seeing him in his uniform while tying his cleats. Go wild for me, you egoist. Blue Locks 11 then walks back onto the pitch, shocked to now see Isagi in the game with his eyes closed. So, this is Japan's football. Isagi sees Ren, and he walks towards him. You did great, but this is when I finally get to defeat you. Let's battle then, Isagi. The team actually kept Sendo in and went to a 4-4-2 formation. The game then starts with Sei passing to Isagi as he dribbles forward and gets to the first person who contested him which was Ryo. You can have Nagi, Ryo. I don't have use for him anymore. Ryo tries to steal the ball with a jab, but is completely devoured by Isagi's moves. After getting behind Ryo, he passes and then vanishes into the defense. Sei then cuts through all the players after getting the ball with a lightning fast pass that goes right to the front where Isagi was. Good pass. He traps it and then begins smiling as he drops it back off to Sendo. Pass back to me, you idiot. They perform a 1-2 pass, getting around the defense as now Isagi was wide open for a shot. This is what I've been waiting for. He goes to shoot only for Ikiniko to then appear to try and stop him. However, 
Isagi fakes a shot and then smiles. Even your eyes still can't see me now. How I've defeated you with this play? Twice. Isagi vanishes from in front of Nico and yells out, Hey Japan, your savior has arrived. Isagi performs the ignite shot, tying the game with Japan yelling out in excitement. Ego sitting up watching the game would then comment to his assistant. It seems Yoichi Isagi has awakened even further because of Itoshi Sei. Wait, what? Yes, with Sei by his side, he can now rival even Rin. Isagi then walks back to Rin. Keep up next time, if you can, you mutt. Rin is angered by this as he watches Isagi walk back to Sei. You played around too much with the ball. I'm having fun crushing them each one by one. Don't worry, I'll score whenever you send it to me. Blue Locks 11 then gets the ball as they would reset and move it around going into an attacking formation. However, as Yukimiya goes to dribble, it's stolen by Isagi who comes out of nowhere. Where did you come from? Isagi turns the ball, gaining full possession of it and then bursts it forward with speed. You could say, I'm in a realm of my own. Nagi then steps up to guard Isagi who passes to Teru who then sends it back to Sei. Sei holds the ball in front of Ren and looks around. There you are. He crosses the ball over the heads of everyone to Sendo, but the ball even goes over his head. Damn it, this prodigy sent it too high. You're such a simpleton. It obviously wasn't for you. This one is all mine. Isagi jumps into the air trapping it with Shigiri and Nico now guarding him. There's no way for you to score at this angle. We have you blocked off. Isagi while midair can only smile. Really? Well, try and stop this. Isagi lands with the ball and then shoots it. But the way he swings his leg, it's different. The ball bursted out with amazing speed. And as their legs went to stop it, the ball would vanish. And it would go right through them. This is when it lands in the back of the net. As Isagi can only sit back and smile, closing his fist as he had scored another goal, putting the U20 team up by one. Nico doesn't even know what that shot was, as he couldn't even see it at all. And Gagamaru, he thought he touched it, but the ball went through his hands. Isagi then walks back over to Sei, telling him to keep setting the ball his way. But more than that, Isagi puts his hand out. Come conquer the world of football with me. Say looks down at it and then thinks to himself, if we win today, I'll join you in this conquest. Say then walks back to his starting position, causing Isagi to smile even more. This is all I've been waiting for. After his goal, Ego himself has to make a change to Blue Lock's, well, starting players. As he subs in, Shoei Baru. The player steps onto the pitch and he goes first to Isagi. I won't allow myself to be devoured by you again. You've already been dethroned, you fallen king. Ren starts with a pass to Nagi who dribbles forward into the midfield. Isagi has become really strong since joining your team. So, this time, we have to beat him, Ryo. He passes to Ryo who would smile. Copy at 99%. As he performs dribble moves like Sei, and then he gets the ball right back up to Nagi, who is defended by Aiku. Nagi traps the ball midair with his eyes glowing. You've gotten way too complacent, Mr. Defender. Nagi traps the ball with his leg, and now he taps it back to Baru, who can be seen going for it, as he smashes the ball but the keeper actually holds his hand out and gets to it, where now Batra now has it. Neru guards him close, but Batra smiles, not allowing himself to have the ball stolen and getting it right through as he does a backheel pass quickly to Yukimiya after getting open. Great pass. Now, let's catch up to the score. Yukimiya shoots the knuckle shot, only to be stopped by Oliver Aiku's header that clears the ball out. So, looks like we have a fighting chance now. So, I need my defensive line to step up their game and support those two freaks of nature. The ball lands in the middle where Sei traps it and then turned back to see Ren guarding him. He flicked it over his brother's head, calling him foolish before sending it right back to Isagi. Now, Isagi was surrounded, as he was the only striker up top since Sendo played a little more back. 
This only caused him to smile. As he kept dribbling around, Kurasu was the one to step up, not allowing him to get close to the box. You idiots still don't get it. After Ego discarded me, I was thrown into the pits of hell, but now I've climbed out of it to devour all of his creations. Isagi vanished, getting right by Kurasu as he was now heading to goal. Kurasu turned. Stop him now. I have no idea how he just did that. Nico and Aryu both step up facing Isagi, who can still only focus on scoring a goal. It's still not enough. Isagi swings his leg, showing off his Ignite Kai shot as it rips through the defense and into the goal, giving them a two-goal lead. Japan erupts with excitement as the commentators even state how it seems a new hero has been born for Japan. All the Blue Locks players still seem to be losing hope at the fact that they can't stop Isagi. This is when they look toward them to see all of Japan's U-20 players behind him, just like an army. Each one of them seems to be playing better thanks to him. Even Sei walks by Rin and says, I've made my decision. I'll play for this shitty country. As long as he remains a competent striker. Rin is angered by this, and on the next play he passes to Baru. Come with me. The two of them enter a flow-like state and begin running through the defense. Baru tears through the U-20 team with his lightning dribble style, and then he uses Rin, who dribbles around like a crazy maniac, devouring and destroying anything that he comes into contact with. This destructive pair creates a new chemical reaction between the two, as Baru is the one to then score a goal after getting a pass from Ren, which even shocks Oliver Aiku. So it seems it's not over after all. Ren and Baru both celebrate, with Baru even getting a yellow card for taking a shirt off. Sei then walks over to Isagi smirking. There's only a couple minutes left. How will you choose to use them? Isagi starts with the ball and passes it to Sendo. Blue Locks players rush in, hoping to tie the game, but Sendo passes back to Wakasuki, who dribbles around before sending it to Sei. Ren and Baru go right for the prodigy, but for the first time in a long time. Sei awakens. His flow state allows him to dance around both of these strikers and rush into the defense head first. Isagi notices that everyone is focused on Sei. However, Iki Niko was right on him. I can't let you score again. So I'll use all my focus to stop you. He runs with Isagi until they come across Sendo, who's also being guarded by someone else. This is where Nico completely loses Isagi in the fog of players. Suddenly, Sei kicks the ball directly towards the goal. Gagamaru knows he could block it, based on the speed that it's traveling. But suddenly, Isagi appears in the air. Aryu jumps as well to try and counter, but it's too late, as Isagi could only think to himself. A final battle to decide the fate of Japan. No, the fate of the world is truly in the grasp of my hands. So stay out of my way. Isagi traps the ball, shocking Sei, who watches on curiously to what he would do. Isagi then performs the phantom shot, and the ball seemingly goes right through the hands of Gagamaru, ending the game. The fans cheer for this new player that will surely lead them to victory. He will bring them a World Cup. Isagi raises his fist to the air and then begins yelling in excitement as the current chairman has no words for Japan's new savior. He tries to brag about him, but many point out how he was still a player from Blue Lock who changed the game completely. So in the end, it seems like they won, as this even caused Jinpachi Ego to smile, knowing that Blue Lock couldn't disappear now that they were on the world's radar. The game was over, and the players from the U-20 team surrounded Isagi cheering him on as he was the one to change everything. Oliver Aiku and Itoshi Sei walk towards him as these three are the ones to make the biggest difference. As after the game, Isagi gets an interview from a reporter who asks where they would go from here. And with Aiku and Sei standing behind him, Isagi states that the U-20 Japan team will win a World Cup. With Oliver Aiku's defense, Itoshi Sei's passes, and my goals will claim victory for this nation and change the world of football. All the fans then yell out in excitement and Isagi's family was truly shocked at how good their son has become. Some time does pass and Japan's football association leaders would change as Jipachi Igo and his assistant have become the heads of it and they decide to move into Blue Lock's second phase even though they did lose against the U20 team 
more people want to see the blue lock players play in a league of their own. So this is where it's decided. Isagi during this time was seen outside of blue lock near a river looking on when someone would join him. It would say, Yoichi Isagi, you've become a player worthy of my passes. Make sure you stay that way. Say then walks off with Isagi now sitting down. I think Blue Lock has changed me a lot. And now the world knows my name as someone who wants to change Japan's football. Isagi then heads home while Ego and his assistant then enter Blue Lock's second phase and send out the text to everyone. He then returns to the building later on and listens to Ego talk about his next project and where they should go in order to grow. What environment would suit them the best? Isagi looks at all the masters on the screen, especially Noel Noah, but decides not to go with him. No, I wish for a place that will allow me to become the best, even better than him. Itoshi Sei even walks up to Isagi, asking which place fits him the most, as he will go with him. An environment for me. I wish for it to be one that will allow me to perfect my current weapons and utilize them to their best ability without my body even holding me back and I want to be able to create even better ones to win games. A place that will allow my body and mind to become one. I think I know where I should go. Yoichi Isagi decides to go with England's Manshine City team. Say then goes with them as the next day the two are seen walking into that section of Blue Lock to greet their new master. The players who go with them or go into this stratosphere are Say, Isagi, Ryo, Nagi, and Chigiri. Ryo decides to go especially to learn how to play just like Sei so that he can help Nagi even more as Nagi was his own version of Isagi. All of them walk inside to see Chris Prince. Welcome Blue Lockers. I'm Chris Prince, your young master. The philosophy for our Manshine City team is speed and rush. Only a healthy body can harbor the madness to change the world. Isagi thinks of what he had just said and how badly his body had to recover after it was pushed to its limits in the U-20 match. You there, Yoichi Isagi, right? Yeah, that's me. You were the hero of Japan's U-20 team. Your goals allowed for a new savior to be born for their nation. I've analyzed your playstyle and your weapons. You're a perfect fit. Fit for what? Chris Prince then rips off his shirt smiling while flexing his muscles. To be my successor, of course. All the other players that point out how they're still here, and Chris Prince would only smile. Yeah, all of you are right. If you somehow defeat Yoichi Isagi on the pitch, I'll have you be my successor instead. Is that what you wanted to hear? Most of them would nod and then listen to his speech, as after each player begins their own body training. As Sei here, as she becomes closer with Isagi and learns of his origin, and how he became a striker. This is when he also begins to rediscover his own lost ego, but it still needs a true catalyst to fully awaken. The Manshine City team then gets word that they have a match coming in just a couple days, as they would face off against Bastard Muchin, who were led by the world's best striker. This is when their master begins to rep up the intensity of their training, as Isagi himself was excited by the first actual match that he'll get to play in. We don't get to see much of Isagi's training or the result of it, as that will come on match day. But now, we soon get to see the remainder of it in this video, as it'll be the fruits of his labor. For the starting lineup on Manshine's team, we see Isagi as a middle striker, Nagi on his left, and Agi on his right. As for the midfield, we see Chigiri on the left side, Sei in the center with Ryo and another player on the right. As for the rest, it doesn't really matter too much. Isagi is shocked to see Kunigami once again, who doesn't even greet him. The taller player then walked by Isagi, who would speak, very lowly so only the two of them could hear. You lost to Shido, and now you've changed. I know I'm not your main target, so make sure you defeat him when you face France. Kunigami only looks to Isagi, and then gets to a starting position. What's surprising is a conversation between Michael Kaiser and Itoshi Sei. So Sei... You've decided to stop sitting up like a pampered house cat and play around a little bit. You could say I've only been waiting for the right striker to appear 
as clearly it wasn't you. Kaiser then asked if he was talking about Yoichi Isagi, to which Sei nods. So, he's gotten your interest as well. Then allow me to crush him before your very eyes. If you can, the way Isagi is now, you might be devoured by his darkness, from which he has emerged. This is when the match begins, and Kaiser gives the ball to Ness who dribbles forward before passing to Grimm, who then passes it back to Kaiser. He continues to dribble forward with Sei getting in the way, as now, these two players would dance around all others, as Sei brilliantly defends him and becomes increasingly competitive and shows his true strength, which allows him to contend further with Kaiser. Right as Kaiser was about to get rid of the ball, Isagi would steal it. That's right, Sei. Keep providing an even greater light that can cast my ideal shadow. Isagi bursted forward with speed, surprising even Kaiser, as now Manshine City was on the counter. Ness is the person to try and stop Isagi first, who would only smile. Out of my way. He used the vanishing drive to overwhelm and then pass the Ryo. Yuki Mia guards Ryo, who then copies the dribble moves of Sei getting around him and goes right for the shot. I don't need to rely on Nagi anymore. He shoots the curved shot only to miss and hit the post, as this is when we also see Isagi getting the ball, as the luck puzzle piece would appear around him. Corona, Ali, and Messer all then guard him, blocking his path, but Isagi begins laughing. Let's see how much I've truly grown. Isagi scores the first goal of this match, as now they are up by one, as this is when Gagamaru points out his power, to which Yukimiya knows it must be his phantom shot because of its speed and how they couldn't stop it. Isagi turns, overhearing this when facing them. Your data from the world's number one must be outdated, because what you've just seen was my perfected ignite shot, which means this was Isagi's weakest weapon. Kaiser is then one to point out, Isagi was interesting, but he'll lose today against him. Lose? You'll be devoured like anyone else. Isagi watches Kaiser reset the ball, and then turns towards Kunigami as he begins running towards him. The fallen hero then looks at Isagi and watches him vanish. Luckily, he's able to get rid of the ball before it's stolen, as Isagi would scoff and Corona gets it looking up surveying the field. Let's go on the attack. He sends the ball towards the middle for Ness, but it's caught by Sei. How predictable. Hey hero, make sure you score this one as well. Sei wasted no time sending it forward into the defense with a lightning pass as Isagi jumps into the air trapping it only for Nagi to appear. Not so fast, Isagi. This is my goal. Nagi and Isagi battle in air for the ball, only for Yukimiya to head it out towards Grimm who gets the ball. Isagi then turns around watching as he sees Shigiri run down the field guarding Grimm, who just drops it off to Kaiser. What a nice pass. Kaiser then dribbles around the defense and scores a goal for Bastard Munchen, as it was his Kaiser impact shot that led them to a tie game. Seems you found a capable striker, say, but I've already figured out his cheap tricks. Isagi then holds out the ball as he would reset it, dribbling forward once again. Isagi is then confronted by Kaiser, and as he tries to use his vanishing drive, it doesn't work. It's useless here, as Kaiser is able to use his metavision and see right through it. But he tries to steal it, and he actually is able to and he passes out wide to Ness, however it's stolen by Kunigami. Out of my way. He cuts fast and shocks everyone by turning to the right, and then he scores the left-footed shot. Isagi then stood, still, looking at Kaiser. This is when Isagi's new personality is truly shown, as after studying under Chris Prince for a short period of time, Isagi has become more of an extrovert, you could say. Isagi then looks up, saying, the true hero of this match has finally arrived. After resetting the ball, he passes to Sei who dribbles forward before giving it right back to him. Now Ness and Kaiser both confront Isagi, believing they have the answers to his misdirection playstyle. However, Isagi shocks him by showing an even greater move, as it's not even a move. 
It's its own form of vision. The Quasi Emperor Eye. Isagi dribbles right through each of them, predicting their moves and then heading straight into the midfield. As they get closer to him, Isagi turns his body, dropping it off to another player who was wide open at this point. Itoshi Sei traps the ball with Ryo, looking to try and steal it from him, but he's only spun around. You're almost too pitiful. He keeps spinning around him and then pulls back his own leg, shooting it in a weird formation from a great distance as Gagamaru believes he can get to it, but he can't, which caused them to be down by one point. Isagi then looks back to Sei, noticing how amazing this goal that he had scored was. Seems I finally got you to awaken, you bloodborne prodigy. Itoshi Sei had now entered his own flow like state, with this declaration being his new meteor jam shot. A move that could only be performed with immense striking ability and accuracy from him. It's something that only a midfielder like him could do. Nagi and Ryo also seem to have no answer since their plan isn't working at all. Chris Prince, while watching this, then turned to Noel Noah. What do you think of them? Quit acting as if you've won this match. Although, I know what you do want from me. You want me to let you know what I think of your current successor, Yoichi Isagi, Japan's very own hero. He's impressive, but I wonder where those eyes will take him. They may even lead them, well, lead him right to me. I still surpass you sooner than you think. Isagi and Sei celebrate their last goal as this match's time is winding down with only about 30 minutes left. Plenty of time for Bastard Munchen to then rise into a comeback, but who knows what will happen. Kunigami starts with the ball as he notices some subs are made. Hayori and Raichi are subbed in. And then he passes to Hayori as a change in their formation also happens with Hayori at the heart of it all with Ness as he receives a direct pass and then goes out wide to each player without missing a beat. The passing of this team is calculated and precise, as the goal here is to get Kaiser open for a shot, or even Kunigami. However, as Hayori gets the ball, Sei appears right in front of him. Hayori passes to Ness and they do a 1-2 to get right by him. See you later, prodigy. Sei then cracks a smile. Don't get ahead of yourselves. This is when Ryo appears out of nowhere, stealing the ball, shocking everyone. Silent striker, 99% complete. Ryo passes the Nagi, who traps it while being surrounded. He then goes to dribble and do faint shots until we get the same shot from the original, putting them up by now two points. There are only minutes left into the game, and it seemed Kaiser was looking off to finish or catch up by himself. As for Kunigami, he was subbed out for Noel Noah, since Chris Prince had subbed himself in for Agi. Isagi, let me show you how to become a true hero on the pitch. Isagi can only turn to him with a serious expression. Good, now you finally showed yourself, so you can be devoured into my darkness as well.